you are doing well and welcome back to another video um in today's video i'm going to be telling you all about the books i read in december it's my december wrap up yes it's the middle of january but being belated is just a common thread now so yeah i'm wearing my study again because it is like freezing cold it's like one degrees but it says it many like it feels like minus four and it does and i'm inside so yep but anywho um in december i read 20 books um which worked uh, which is my second best reading month after january which was 24. Mm. i read 3545 pages which is actually my highest page count for a month um and i listened to just over 50 hours of audio book listening um so yeah um it was quite a good reading month per se i had six rereads in december um which were all five stars themselves but i didn't have any new any new ones um but yeah i just thought i would just try and go a little bit more quicker than i usually do because uh, most of these are like 40 minutes long now and i don't want this to become a running tread tread theme i don't know whatever um the first book i read was winnie the pooh at the palace um this is based on the original work by a.a a. milne and e.h shepherd the drawings uh but it was written by jan willis and it illustrated by mark burgess this is tiny um it's a it says children's book evidently um and it has um you know like drawings in uh this just basically follows winnie the pooh and christopher robin on a snowy day and they visit buckingham palace and have like a little bit of an adventure um yeah i enjoyed it i think i gave this about a four um yeah it was fun it was fine it was cute it was enjoyable um i absolutely love winnie the pooh um i'm probably gonna keep this even though i probably shouldn't because i'm i don't know if i'm gonna read it again oh yeah i probably will maybe in the future but um but yeah also it has a nice naked hard ja cover jacket um which i appreciate so yeah nothing really else to say about it it was a nice wintry read getting ready for christmas season so that's why i read it then i listened to her story which is by various people um these are sort of like plays in a sense they're like acted out and like spoken um and it just details different like women in like different um like historical settings sort of thing um honestly i didn't really like so i think i gave it like three stars um i think it had a lot of potential but i just didn't really enjoy the stories all that much um it is quite varied but it is mostly like british centric um and yeah i don't even know what else to say about it other than it was it was fine i probably would recommend it i guess um but at the same time i didn't really enjoy it all that much or get much out of it so yeah um then i read bola um by Pajtim stachowski um i hope that's pronounced that right it's just translated from finnish by um david haxton um i was reading this whilst i was away visiting my sister um and i like annotated it sort of you can see um because i thought i was gonna really love this book um i'm not 100 percent sure on what star rating i'm gonna give it i'm probably gonna be a four um it's in like 1995 and then it also is set in like the 2000s uh this follows our sim um who is like a newly married um um albanian man in kosovo um and it's like at the beginning of sort of like the tension in the balkan area um and he meets um milos who is a serb and they have like a like a romance like a doomed like love um because obviously they're both men and it's in a very like stressful scenario because they're both different ethnicities and obviously they're gay and um it like the area and just the time and everything is just up against them um yeah i i, I enjoyed it for the most part but at the same time i there's also issues i had with it i think i need to like really just have a good deep dive into my thoughts on what 
I thought about this and then maybe make a video like just explaining them um but yeah at the moment I would recommend it but it wasn't like a favorite um it's a little bit like my policeman in that there's a there's there's quite a lot of good parts but there's also quite a lot of bad parts and they sort of outweigh each other so yeah also i really love this cover i just think it's so understated and like the shine stuff it's just yeah i love that um <laughs> then i read a middle grade um leah williamson written with her cousin jordan glover um the wonder team and the forgotten footballers um and it's also illustrations by robin by robin boyden um i'll just show you one of the illustrations there um this is really fun i really really enjoyed it this follows leah um <laughs> I mean, I I probably would have changed her little first name, but you do what you want, gal. You're an icon. You're a queen. I love you. Um, and it follows her and her friends, um, George and Mimi, um, and they find this like watch, like a pocket watch, and it transports them back to like the I want to say the 1920s, I think, um, and they're outside like a football stadium and there's like a woman there and she's like angry because the like fa and like the government have literally just banned women from participating in, in like football competitions um and with and there's like there's like a, a group the crickle end champions um and they're just trying to like see will this like like the final of this like championship um cup still go ahead or not and they're just trying to find that out but also they're trying to like get back home and yeah it was really really fun it it muses like time travel and like football and like i guess also commentary on like women's rights and women's like opportunities and place in society um and yeah i really really enjoyed this book i think i give it like 4.25 stars um i i believe it's going to be part of a series but i'm not 100 percent sure if it is i'm definitely gonna be picking out picking the rest uh because i love Willie williamson um she is the captain of the lionesses she is currently injured she's like not at the moment but i've been seeing those arsenal picks i've been seeing those x you know twitter x um post uh seeing you in training and it's looking bright it's looking hopeful so yeah i love love women's football i've been following it for like about two three years now like heavily um and i just wanted to support her and i really really enjoyed this and i would so recommend it um it's also like it's just great just story even without the messages and the things it's just a fun time and happy i read that then i did my heartstopper reread um because volume five came out in december um so that's basically what it is i read volume one volume two volume three um the first chapter of volume four and then this winter then the last chapter um and then i because I wanted to reread them ready and it would give them all five stars by the way um before going on to Heart Supper volume five which is a new one the baby um and yeah I really really enjoyed this if you don't know what Heart Supper is it follows um two teenage boys Charlie and Nick and um they are in love and it just it's very very cutesy and fun and it's just like exploring like their budding relationship and um also with their friends and there's so much diversity so much representation it's so so adorable so cute um and this comes off of the back of volume four which broke me um in that volume um charlie goes to stay at like a mental health facility place um because he's dealing very badly with his like eating disorder and mental health and in this volume it's just like them sort of like getting back to normality and also the future ahead with nick thinking about like uni options and like what he wants to do and also charlie is just like getting more like stable and more happy in himself again it's really really beautiful to see also there's like growth in their relationship and um thinking about like moving it forward as one must say um and yeah i really, really enjoyed this i actually lied earlier because this is the new five star um i loved it the artwork is beautiful um just a little example um and i just i just adore it i adore this series so much i love it it's 
one of my favorite things ever um and i would so 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 recommend you to read this if you haven't already um it's just beautiful um just try out volume one and just see what you think because you're bound to enjoy it you're bound to love it because it's so cute then i listened to mary or the birth of frankenstein by Anne eekhout um this is taking um mary shelley's like life um like while she, it sort of flips back between when she was at um geneva with um her husband or boyfriend and like the poets and stuff and how that like time there and how they was all sort of like thinking up of like a scary ghost story and then what led to her creating frankenstein um but it also thinks back to like a couple summers before um well yeah i think it was summers um and she goes to stay at like a relative's like house in the north of scotland um and the matriarch had recently died and she's just sort of like becoming friends with i think it's isabel i've sort of forgotten this book to be honest um and sort of like a possible romance bruise between those two uh because mary shelley was bisexual um and i yeah that is sort of like the plot and there's also just like thinking up, like her thinking up the story and like what sort of led to the birth of frankenstein in a sense i thought this was fine but it was definitely a missed opportunity um i feel like annie cow definitely could have explored her bisexuality a lot more in this book that's what it said on the back in the description of the audiobook i listened to um that it was going to explore that more but it honestly it didn't really um and yeah i just wasn't really all that impressed with it um i think i gave it 2.5 stars um i'm getting a little bit more harsher with my stars at the moment because um not everything can get a three if it isn't a three or a four if it's not a four you know so um this was i think one of the first i viewed i rated quite harshly or more accurately i think it's a better term um so yeah it, it was it was fine but i wouldn't really recommend it i didn't really enjoy it it was very very slow the writing is nice enough but it just was kind of boring and not what i wanted out of what i thought i was getting then i listened to run to the rest and shore by tim pears um this is set in like i want to say like 1100s or something a very long time in england and uh we're following quintus who is a roman slave um and oh I've totally forgotten the woman's name now. That is really annoying. It's like, it's a Welsh name. I don't just want to say a stereotypical name and it'd be wrong because I feel like that might be disrespectful. Um, but it follows him and also this girl who, well, a young woman, and she is the daughter of like a chief and she is just being like basically given to a roman soldier like sort of person as part of like a peace treaty so her and quintus sort of like run away um and they just start sort of like telling stories to each other and like a friendship and then a romance blooms between the couple um and they're both just like on their way to the shore so they can get off of england because um like people are after them basically um and also like the woman she wants to sort of like be like a warrior and stuff but because she's a woman it's not seen as her calling her path in life um and they're very different because she like knows the ways of like nature and like like that sort of things and like co connecting with different like tribes and communities whereas quintus is a man of like knowledge and logic and um he knows lots of different languages because he's been with his like master traveling around sort of like the roman empire and um just like um get into grips with like different like paths of knowledge and things uh, so there's quite a difference there but um it is the nice romance that blooms and i did enjoy this uh, there is quite a bit of animal cruelty and death that i just i hate reading so much so i i can't remember what i gave it i think it was maybe a four stars or maybe a 3.75 i'm not sure something like that um and yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend it um the writing is very nice it's very short um but it wasn't like a new favorite obviously um but i would be intrigued to maybe read something by him again but it's not like 
on my top list at the moment. Then I read Miss Marley by Vanessa Le Fay, um, and this was actually finished um, by her friend um, Rebecca Maskell. Um, it also has illustrations in it, um, but I, I can't see who did them. Um, but yeah, this um, follows Clara and Jacob who, you know, Jacob Marley from Scrooge, Christmas Carol, um, it follows them when they were orphaned as children and it basically is sort of like a reimagining of Jacob's origin story of how he became like friends with and partnered with Scrooge and why after his death he has like a massive big change of like what did he do wrong in his life um, but it she in the like the introduction like part she says she didn't want to like use Jacob as the main focus because she might not do justice in a way to the original so she imagined a character Clara his sister yeah his younger sister or older I'm not sure um and it's her we follow and um yeah it's fun it's fine I think I gave this like 4.5 stars um something like that or maybe 4.25 I'm not sure I can't really remember I really cannot remember for life of me now <laughs> um but yeah it was fun it was enjoyable um it's um basically like sort of like them in poverty and then how they got to like going up a bit more in the world and also she starts like a romance um and that was so sweet but it was oh, it was heartbreaking um with uh like a man uh, that owns like a tea store like a tea shop and just sort of like the disapproval of her brother and sort of like the the way they sort of like distance distance themselves from each other and like grow apart um because in the start they have such a strong bond because of their situation but later on it just sort of like grows apart and just sort of under understanding what jacob did wrong basically um yeah i really enjoy it so so recommend this um it's also really like a cute nice addition and that follows into my next read which was a Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Um, I read this last year. I absolutely loved it. I love this classic so so much. It's another. It's five stars again from me. Even though it's the second time. Um, I have this really beautiful puffin um, cloth bound edition that I got. Um, and it has a little bookmark as well, but I keep it tucked away. Um, if you don't know the story, where have you been? Um, <laughs> Scrooge, miser. Marley comes back to tell him he's getting visited by a free ghost. Past, present, yet to be. Um, will he change his ways? Dot, dot, dot. I love this story. It's so imaginative, so fun. Um, and I would so, so recommend giving it a read. It's also really, really short. Um, and I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, it just gets me into the Christmassy mood and... I love this story and so many adaptations just hold a special place in my heart so yay then i listened to the o'brien book of irish fairy tales and legends by una levy um i i want it i this is an annoying book i gave it like three stars um and that's sort of being generous um but i did really really enjoy this book um it's i think they're a proper paperback or hardback copy has sort of pictures in it and it's obviously is aimed at children um so i feel like i should maybe review it in that way but it's basically a collection of like short little stories of irish myths and legends and fairy tales um and i really really enjoyed them um it's just they were so so short to have any like expansion or growth um but at the same time i do feel like it has ignited in me like a want to read more into these stories and try and find maybe like adaptations of them for example so like one of them is about the children of lear um which um savage her reply by deirdre sullivan which i read earlier in the year is a adaptation and expansion of this story and I really, really enjoyed that. So, like, other versions of this I would love to read. Um, I think my favourite one was uh, Tear Ninog, um, something like that, um, which I, oh, I could read, like, a 
such a long book about this story because it just sounds so so good um but yeah um i did enjoy it and i want to explore more of it but because of its length i couldn't love it as much as i wanted to you know so yep i listened to the saint of lost things by tish delaney i'm still a bit stumped on this one i think i'm gonna give it four stars um i enjoyed it but also i didn't love it um and yeah i think i when i compile my thoughts more i can have a more articulated response and maybe do a whole video on it um but it's basically following a woman i forgot her name now um she's in northern ireland and she has come back from staying in london like a couple years ago and she's just like growing like older and um that's one thing and she's like with her aunt and her granddad and it's just a very toxic tense like scenario and situation um and her mother sort of like died when she was like young so the aunt just sort of like blames her for having to take care of her in a way um and then it also it sort of like goes back in time to when she went to london as uh, like a nurse um and her time there and like exploring like independence in a way which she didn't have before and just um yeah like a new life um and yeah i did enjoy it quite a lot um, i did think it has like quite like a lot to say also about sort of like the troubles in northern ireland and um the complex and disjointed relationship between northern ireland and the republic and great britain as and uk as a whole um and also just about like women's place in a sense and the sort of like also like religious divide and views on like just a lot of things um i did enjoy it quite a lot um i liked the audiobook um and i would recommend it but i'm not 100 percent sure on my thoughts yet so sorry about that next one i read was beast in the shadows by edogawa rampo it's just translated from japanese by ian hughes um this alongside um the next book the world's wife by carol and duffy um i have a whole video because i was trying to finish a um reading challenge the same also with one piece by um echiro oda um volumes one to three um but in this it's i didn't really like this i think i gave it like two point something stars um it's following like a writer and he becomes friends with like a housewife and the housewife starts getting these letters from uh like an old like relationship guy in a way um who she let down and um he is sort of like sending like threatening letters and like what he's gonna do to her in a way and like like threatening wise and he is apparently another writer um and this the first writer sort of just like he's trying to un like undercover basically what's going on um yeah i didn't really enjoy this to be honest i didn't really like it um and i wouldn't recommend it so yeah um then like i said i read the world's wife by carolyn duffy there's a collection of poems um which um take women from mythology and history um and explores them a bit more sort of like example medusa or circe um but there's also um female like versions of male heroes like king queen kong um as an example um or like the cray sisters and there's also like imagined or real wives and girlfriends of male people as well so like mr icarus or uh, i can't remember just M mrs syphysis mrs darwin um and yeah i enjoyed this quite a lot i gave it four stars um and she infuses like wit and humor but also like a meaningness as well into these poems um and yeah i enjoyed it it's sort of like mythological retelling in a way but in like poems and 
I enjoyed it, would recommend. Then penultimately I listened to The Night She Disappeared by Lisa Jewell. As I said in my worst books of the year video, I think I said it in that one, I'm going to be doing a whole video on this book because I have a lot to say and a lot of thoughts. But basically it started very very good, slow but good and then it just went like poof downhill. Um, I think I gave this like two stars. Um, I think I gave it 2.5 at the moment but I think that needs to be lowered because it's it, it it really infuriated me the ending and how things uncovered it was just so not good but it's basically like a thriller mystery book about this girl that goes missing and sort of like the investigation into it and it's like different time frames and just stuff like that so yeah whatever um and then finally the final book i read in the year and the month um, was One Piece Volumes 1, 2, 3 by Ichiro Oda, translated from Japanese by Andy Nakatani. Um, yeah, this basically follows Luffy. Um, he eats the gum gum fruit, which means that his body is like rubber, but he can't swim. Um, and obviously that's not a good thing for a, a pirate. Um, and it basically just follows him trying to find a crew and in his initial search of the one piece which is the treasure left over by this old famous pirate it's an anime um i did like the like the drawings um i think they were done very like well and nice um and yeah i like the story i like following like your dreams in a way um and yeah and i'm i'm enjoying like getting to know these characters i think i gave this four stars or something like that um i'm not like uh, i'm not like desperate to follow it on i mean i might do in the future but it's not like a must for me at the moment um but yeah on the whole i enjoyed it and i would recommend it but it wasn't like amazing so yeah um that is the end of my December wrap up and my final wrap up of 2023. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it um, and um, subscribe for more wrap ups in the new year this year. Um, James is already the 15th. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe and like if you would like to do so um and i shall see you soon have a nice morning even night wherever you are in the world bye, bye.